All right, folks, decided it was time for another update. Uh, made some modifications. I'm uh, big on not setting my designs in stone on paper. In fact, I usually don't put them on paper. Um, I usually kind of design on the fly. And as I talked about many times, my plan was to try to get three grow beds back there. <clears throat> and the more I looked at it and the more I thought about it, the more I decided I'd rather have two grow beds that look really good and that are easy to work on and I can use 100% then have three that I can use about, you know, oh, I don't know, maybe uh, half each and end up with a 1.5 instead of a two of a effective yield. So I went with two side by side like that. And those are going to be really easy to work on. And they keep the structure size reasonable. <clears throat> if you think about it, if I turn these two this way, like my original plan, this facade would be coming out to about here. And that would actually be good from a standpoint of keeping sun off the water, but it really would kind of ruin, I think, the overall effect. Let's step back a little bit. I think you can see that what we're coming up with, and of course the whole thing will be stained when it's done, it looks really good. And uh, it was designed with some things in mind. These big 10-foot 4x4s actually uh, don't even really support these tanks with the new design I came up with. I still use them and they're still important though because it gives me a great big honking steady thing to grab onto right here and what's going to happen there let me reach down here is there will be four four by fours just excuse the phone for a second it will bolt on like that let me see if that'll stay <laughs> you have to lean it to give you an idea what I'm talking about so they'll be able to bolt to the inside of those 4x4s which are lag bolted down into this tank which ain't going nowhere and uh, anchored into the ground and then that'll form a pergola that'll be about five foot wide so it'll overhang the box about 15 inches on each side and go up to just a little bit past the uh, edge of the roof line there and that'll put some you know dappled shade because this thing gets hammered during the day. It'll look really cool and provide a growing trellis. Uh, next up, probably start running some plumbing. I'm gonna have to go to the store because I got a new bell siphon I'll be laying on you that my buddy uh, David came up with. It's really, really cool. And uh, just makes everything easier. So I gotta build a couple of those out and uh, get media in here. Uh, get the water topped off and get these guys filled up with stone and get this side cycling Once I get that cycling, we'll start working on building out these guys over here So we got some stain work to do. It's not sloppy work I just last night knocked out what I could really easy with a little roller and since these uh, Boards are imperfect. I have to come back with a brush and clean all that up. I'll get that done today, too uh, But that's where we're at Things are really starting to take shape now. My wife's starting to come around. Told you make it pretty women like it. And I got to do top rails on this box too. I have a, a friend of a friend who's a really good carpenter though. I might uh, see when he's going to be in town and get him to do those rails because he'll make them look a lot sharper than I can. Anyway, that's where we're at. Just a brief update. Just want to keep uh, you abreast of where things are going. But I really think we're starting to come around. I had a couple questions I wanted to address, even though I did answer them in the comments, and I always try to do that if they're real questions instead of sniping questions. One was, why did I even bother filling this in with dirt? You know, it was added step, it was added expense. Well, there's, there's three real reasons. Number one, when everything's said and done with, and we, if I keep talking about putting some river rock in there or something, it's just going to look better. That's, that's number one. Uh, number two, it does a lot to stabilize the temperature of the water. Basically, that's all insulation around that tank now. And that's going to keep that tank a lot more stable. It's going to keep it cooler longer in the summer. And it's going to keep it from freezing longer in the winter. So that's another reason we did it. And then the other reason is it kind of adds stability to the entire structure. Because now we have something very hard, very heavy up against the inside these things ain't going nowhere like i said they're put together on each layer with a bunch of these guys these guys are these guys are like magic man i love the way they feel when they pull stuff together 
So um, that's why we did the dirt. Another question was how much space was there in this access point? Now, this ledge does overhang a couple inches, but I have a pretty big hand. You can see my hand fits in there. So I'd say these top ones here are about 10 inches and down by the bottom is more like a foot because the tank kind of comes out as it comes up. Let me see if there's any more questions that I can remember that people ask me. Oh, why'd I go with a tank instead of just putting a pond liner in here and doing it like I did my big Miyagi? Well, the reason I did that is, number one, I had that tank. And since I already had it, there was no expense in it. The other reason, though, is penetrating pond liners can be done. It's a little bit dicey. Multiple penetrations I'm not super comfortable with. And right now, I already have two bulkheads in there. There's a third one going in uh, for overflow drain. And all that really does is make my plumbing really easy because I have that flat hard surface you take a whole saw bzz, put a bulkhead in you never have any problems with them so it just made that part easier and because I could do that you know my other option the Miyagi would be come over the top it lets me lower all my plumbing my point of return that's really key here and it looks cleaner so that's why I did that however I mean there's a good point here if you wanted to do it I mean, this would make a heck of a beautiful Miyagi, and it would more than double the capacity of the water. And uh, if you have a place you can dig a little deeper, you know, you could go two or three landscaping timbers lower and put your Miyagi liner in the ground another couple feet, and you could have two and a half, three foot of depth and only a foot of height. If I could dig holes here, I probably would have done that. And then what we could have done is run everything to the back and hit it under that top box instead of plumbing through and then coming over the top would not be a big deal because you could raise your entire system or lower your system you know another foot so i'm not saying that there's not a place where that would actually be a better and more economical decision a pond liner though <clears throat> edpm 25 mil fish safe food safe pond liner about the size of this box that this box would require you know you're looking at maybe a hundred and twenty dollars I, I didn't price it out but off the top of my head I'd say it's about hundred twenty dollars for what you're really looking for and you probably want to line that with a felt liner you know that's gonna be another 40 bucks so you, you're looking at almost two hundred dollars that tanks 250 bucks so the, the cost is about the same uh, and then you have ease of plumbing Again, the difference, though, is you would have twice the volume of water. So, anyway, there you go. Hope you enjoy the update and keep the questions coming. I'll try to answer them in the comments and in future videos.